Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and today we have a bit of a different project. I'm going to show you how I made this rock biter. This will be the first and last time I ever make this character. I did make him for myself so he's going to be sitting here in my craft room keeping me company. And I started him with no plan and because there was no plan when I was making him I did have to fix a few things along the way so you get to see how I do that as well. And his body is made of foil, masking tape, paper towel, and some basic white glue. And use the cheapest paper towel that you can find. Nothing that's three-ply and nothing that's quilted. This is your basic Walmart brand right here. It does have a bit of a design on it, but that disappears when it's wet. If you have anything with a thick design, it's probably going to show up on your character. So try to find a cheap paper towel. All right, my friends, I used a variety of different colors in this video, and you, you are welcome to choose whatever colors you want to choose. But to get his base coat, I did use black, gray, and white. And then for the off colors and a little bit of highlighting, I used navy blue, hunter green, another gray, burnt umber, and some cream. And with the paint, of course, you need some brushes. And I used a variety of different sizes. So this would be for the base coat. And this would be for highlighting, feather brush. And then your basic little brushes for dabbing on paint and whatever. And some thin tip brushes also come in handy. All right, my friends, we're about to get started. In the next clip, I am rolling off foil to start his body. And remember when I started this project, I didn't really have a full plan in place. I was just going with it. And I ended up adding details after he was already painted. And then I, I repainted him along the way. And I do show a lot of it, but some things I didn't show, like uh, I added this cuff, the extra stone at the bottom of his leg after he was painted, but I didn't catch that on film. But yeah, just keep that in mind. You can add on at any time. You're never stuck. But do take a look at his pictures online and uh, kind of figure out all the little details before you get started. And then you don't have to backtrack like I did. One last tip about the foil before we get started. I am using the strong one. You can use whatever foil that you have on hand. I use this one because it is strong and I don't have to use as much. So if you're following along and you're wondering why your limbs aren't holding up like mine are, it's probably because your foil is thin. If it's a grocery store brand or no name brand especially, it's thin. So you'd have to double or triple up the amount of foil that you roll off compared to what I'm rolling off here. Okay, he's just a little bit under five inches right now. And the very top here is about two and a half inches wide. The bottom about four and a half inches. And it's narrow up here right now because I'm gonna be adding those wonderful arms here. And by wonderful, I mean these here. <laughs> so it's gonna make this part much wider before we get the head on there. Okay, at first I was going to have the legs coming straight out from here, but now I've changed my mind, and I'll just set his body right on top. That'll give him a little extra height on top as well, so you can see his feet. Now I'm going to be adding toes and stuff right now, I just want the basic shape for now. Alright, I think what I'll do before I attach those legs is establish a belly first. Yeah, I'll get the legs attached and the belly attached to start with. At least I'll have a place to kind of work from. If his legs end up being too short when I'm done, I can always just fold this part down and then just add length later. So I'm not stuck with anything. I just need the basic shapes to start with and then I'll have a good idea where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna go. A little wonky here but we can fix that later it's all about if you don't know what to do you just start with something and that's what I've learned over the years just start with something and from the pictures I'm looking up I'm just gonna go with the basic shapes to start with and then I'll build on from there all right now I'm gonna start the arms
here. And putting this on here, I'm thinking I'm not going to have enough room in here for his head. So I'm going to add some width in here. And I think that'll do it, guys. So put the arms on. And remember, the head's going to go in here. Now, he does have fingers. So I'm going to start working those out now before I attach this because it might be too hard to do it after. So I just want to establish how they're going to sit. So this guy, I want him to be able to hold a rock up like he's been eating a rock. And then the other arm is going to, is going to rest down into his leg here. And then his hand will start right about here. Okay, and we're going to split these into fingers. All right, my friends, I am popping in with an edit because I realized when I was editing just now that I should have been more clear with the hands, but because I was just winging my way along and I wasn't even sure if it was going to work, I just kind of just kept going and I didn't stop to explain. So I made the arm, as you saw, and then the hand, I'm going to do it real quick here. So this is going to get lots added to it later. So it's just, I just wanted the basic shape to start with so I, knew I could map out where everything was going to sit. So this was my basic arm. This would be the hand because it's flared out. And see how thin it is? I probably could just fold this down. And then for the fingers, I wasn't actually making these into fingers. I was getting the shapes figured out. So I just split this. So this was just to kind of map out where the fingers were going to be. So I just squished these down into finger shapes. Okay, so it's starting to look more, more like a hand now. And then I'd fold this over to give it a little bit more strength. Fold each one over. Now the ones that I was doing for this guy, his his fingers seemed to be a lot longer at this stage, but it didn't really matter anyway because I was going to be adding on to them. So there we have four little stubby fingers, and then here would be the thumb. So I'll just split this here. And there's my thumb. So see the logic behind that? It's just mapping out the pieces that we have, and then we can add on to them or take them away as we need to. And yeah, so to bulk up the fingers, what I did was take another piece of foil, and then shape a finger on top and leave the bottom open. So I can take this now and lay it right over top whatever finger I'm building up. Say it's this one. Then squish those two together. And then if I want to make it shorter, I could just fold this over and squish it. And then the bottom pieces, just wrap them around. And if I needed to, I would just tape that in place so it would stay there. And then I would do the next finger and the next finger and next finger and then the thumb. And then pretty soon I've bulked it up enough where I have fingers like this. And it's easier for attaching if you have the bottom wide open like a fan like that. And then everything just kind of hangs on to each other. Or you can tape it in place while you keep building. So that's how I did the arm for this guy and that worked for me but I realized it might be a little bit too you know finicky so now that I did this for you on film again I was just thinking about how could I make it easier and I think if we took individual fingers just like this and then just put them together now these are super long but you can always cut the length once you're happy with the arrangement look at that yeah that would work too guys and then over the arm. So that would probably be exactly how I do it next time if I was to make another character like that with hands. So there you go guys. Now you have two options. I think this one is easier though. I would put the hand where you want it and then shape the arm up into the shape that you want it to have. And if it's too long you can always cut the top off or just fold it over. And if it's too short you can always add on to the top. Okay, so I've decided I'm going to have to make his leg a little bit longer. So I just folded that down a bit. Okay, so I think like that. But that's a good start. Now we have to work out this arm here. And he's going to be holding a rock. Okay, I'm going to split these for fingers as well. And he'll have a rock right there. 
perfect. Okay, I'm just going to work a little bit on the bottom part here with some more foil. I'm going to shape out the back. See, he's got a big dip there. i got to fix that. So we got a big uh, fat back end here and belly. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave his toes uh, short like that or if I'm going to make them a bit longer. I haven't decided yet, but there we go. We got started anyway. So the leg, I'm going to start that first because the leg is too skinny. So I'm going to add some bulk to the leg before I start the foot. See what I'm doing there? I just put it on the table. Instead of going all the way around, I just start here, wrap over, and I'll probably wrap back back over this way. Okay, I'm just going to tape that down. Now I'm going to add the foot, and that is a separate piece. So what I do is just take a piece of foil. I'm going to fold it over. And now I'll shape it so there's a heel on the bottom, and the top part's going to be spread out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tape that on. I'm just going to push this down. So right now that's a flat foot. And I'm just going to make sure that I have the right height there. Okay, and I'm going to separate for the toes. And don't worry if you can't get the right number in there because we can always add in more foil after. In which I'm going to do again. So on this one, when I did this one, I had four toes to start off with, and then I added this piece after. So let's do that again. This makes it a lot easier. So there's my first one, my second one. I'm just folding them down a little bit just to give a little bit of bulk, something for the other pieces to hang on to, because I'm going to build on top of these. I'm just going to add a little bit of bulk in the back there. There we go. Now I'm going to start adding the toes. We don't need very big pieces, but I'm going to make a little ball on top. Okay, now I'm going to make the second toe. Same thing, I'm just going to make a ball on top. So I'm leaving the bottom open and just forming a ball on top. Okay, I'm going to take that piece in. So it's like building blocks. We're just going to keep adding and adding until we have the shapes and sizes that we want. So that's pr pretty much a flat foot still, but so was this one when I first started. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of bulk here. So you can see this big toe is bigger than that one, and that's because I built onto it after I had done this step here. I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Okay, so now I can tape them up, but what I do is I take little strips. It's going to get in the center first, in between two toes, and then wrap around. And that's how I get all the way around the toes. Okay, and then I took a butter knife, and I just went in between the toes, just to make sure that that tape is sticking in there really well. And I got a little bit of separation between the toes. So now we'll shape the foot a little bit more and see the foot pad there. That's just a little bit of foil that I stuck on and then taped over it. See how flagged it is here? And that looks so much cuter. But first I'm just going to stick my fingernail in between the toe and the foot and push towards me. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of foil and just stick it right on the foot pad. I think that's what you call it. A little bit of puffiness below the toes. <laughs> Okay, and we can just tape that right in place. 
So there we go. I gotta shape this foot a little bit more, but I'll do that off camera. Anyway, we can add a little bit of bulk in here as well. Um, again, I'll worry about that later. Just looking dead on, I think he needs a little bit of height here. Okay, so I added about that much, about an inch on top there. A little bit around the sides. I'm not finished shaping the back and all that, but uh, we're getting there. And just looking at his photos, uh, the ones I have off to the side here, he's got a big fat belly. So I wanna do that. I wanna give him one of those. We're getting there, little pieces at a time. So what I'm gonna do now is fix up the fingers and it'll be the same way I did the toes. So if I wanted to add a little bit more bulk to that finger, And you can make them as long or as thick or as fat or as skinny as you want to. Um, yeah, so they're all bulked up. And every finger I added individually, the same way I did the toes. And the arms got quite a bit of bulk added as well. So again, just foil and masking tape. So in the next clip, we're going to be adding the paper towel. All right, guys, I prepared some paper towel. I just tore all the edges. I don't want any straight edges. So. Depending on what type of glue that you're using, if it's very thick, it's going to be hard to use when you dip your paper towel in there. So I find that watering it down helps, especially if you have a tacky glue. So I have a little bit of glue in there. I'm just gonna put in a little bit of water. So see how thick that is, how slow that runs off. But if I mix it in with the water, so that's gonna be easier to pull off your paper towel. And if you add a little bit too much, it's not a big deal. It's just, it'll just be a little bit too runny, that's all. I still use it. Sometimes I dump in too much and I still use it. So don't worry about that. So that's very runny, see? So I try to use a little less water, but either way, it's gonna work. Okay, so I dipped it in there. I put the dry sides together, took off the excess glue, and now I'm just going to make sure I got glue on both sides. And because this is my first layer, I'm not gonna worry too much about the details, right? I'm just gonna get the masking tape covered for this step. So I'm gonna get all the upper part of him done and let him dry in front of the fan and then I'll turn him over and I'll do this side as well because the underside of him also needs to be done. And this is my first layer of skin. So I'm not gonna worry too much about what it looks like but I'm just gonna make sure that I get out all the air bubbles. So just to make sure I push all those out. Okay, he's dry to the touch and all this yellow that you see is just dried paper towel and all the white you see is just the wet glue underneath. So it's still drying. It's dry to the touch. It can be painted if I wanted to paint it at this point, but we still have some work to do. So we'll just set them aside for a bit. And the hands, I thought I would do that on camera for you so you can see how I did mine. So for the fingers, so I just laid it right over top the tips like that, had a little bit in the back showing through and then I took my knife. And then just push down what I could. Now, I believe I only did two fingers at a time using this method. Yeah, two fingers works. So you see what I did there? Just pull it through. And then whatever comes through, you just lay it down. And because we're going for a very rough texture anyway, like rocks, it doesn't matter what it looks like really. As long as you get it down and there's no air bubbles. And again, this is just, you know, one method. If you find something else that works better for you, then by all means. And the doll side, of course. And if you get paper towel sticking to your finger as you try to run it down, just dip your finger in glue and then run it over. Okay, got a little bit of a thumb showing there. And you do have to cover every bit of the masking tape. The paper towel gives us a paintable surface. So I'll set this arm under the fan and let it dry. Uh, I'm going to be adding more to his face, of course, and I want to glue that on there. I'm just going to open up this part.
I'm just going to add a little bit of bulk here. And I'm using hot glue. You know what I might do? I might take a little bit out of here, unless I can push it in. Oh, that's better. Okay, I'll just do it that way. I think I can work with that, and we gotta make his arms and this part become one piece, and we're gonna do that with, with uh, paper towel, so there won't be any seam there. So that's gonna disappear. Okay, so I think what I'll do is then is attach his arms. And again, I'm winging my way along here, guys. So if you get ideas for your own, don't feel like this is the only way that you can do things. Whatever works for you, whatever is easiest. All right, my friends, it's a good time to pop in with an edit. And just to tell you to keep in mind where you put the head and how much belly you're going to have, because you can see when I first figured out his head, I didn't have enough room for these boulders, so I had to add a chin down here later on, and you'll see me do that later. In adding that, I lost a big portion of his belly. So his head is now bigger than his belly, and it's supposed to be the other way around. Just keep that in mind, and as you're building your own, that you want to have enough room for a belly. You want to have enough room for those boulders there, and you want to make sure that his head is a little bit smaller than I've got here. Or you can make it the same size, it's up to you. But if you wanted to go according to what he looks like in the movie, his head is quite a bit smaller than this. I love him anyway, but yeah, keep all those things in mind and we'll continue on. Okay, so I think I need to add something here to make it look a little bit more normal instead of a, just a cutoff spot there. Looking better already. Okay, and then we have to build this part up. In the pictures I looked at, his shoulders come up above his face. So let's do that. Alright, so I'm just going to cover up this seam here. and It's just a little bit of foil right over top. And the back, I might add a little bit more here. Just to fill in this area here. Give him a little bit of a hunchback. Okay, I'm just going to tape all of this up and then we'll work on his nose. And if your tape isn't sticking to the paper towel underneath, don't worry about that because we're going to be doing more to paper towel on top and you'll just overlap them anyway, so it's okay. All right, I was just playing with his lips there. Give him a little bit of a curved lip and then his nose. Think his chin is too far back, so I'm going to build that up as well. So I need to build out that bottom lip just a little bit more. And I'll just add a little bit of brow up here. Okay, I'm going to cover him with tape. I'll worry about the little details like ears and eyes when I get to the paper towel stage because I can manipulate the paper towels to make like little details like that. When you get to the mouth part, I just take a piece and shove it in there and roll it up. Fold it over on top and then I'll take something to push the inside up. And we'll do those arms together. So 
So I'm going to bring a solid piece from the top right down here to where the, it would crease naturally. And if you want to work more texture, then just double up the paper towel. Like you could put another layer on top and then you can get even more details worked in there. Which I think I'm going to do on the arm because I want to try something. I'll add another piece there right now. So I'll see if I can add in... So hopefully that texture stays in there as it dries. I'd be so happy about that if it does. Okay, so I'm going to do two layers on this side as well. And I'll do the same thing. And when I get to his fingernails, we'll come back and I'll show you how I decide to do those. Because at the moment, I have no idea. But I'll know once I get there. I got his arm done. I'm not totally happy with his knuckles yet. So I might add to those. For the fingernails, when I put the uh, paper towel over top, I just squeezed with my own fingernail to make an indent, to make a little spot for what would be a fingernail. And hopefully that works. As far as the texture goes that I made with the brush, I'm not sure if it's still there. <laughs> I'm looking at it. it. Well, I guess it is. It's a, it's rough there. Yeah, I guess it is. Um, not as much as when it was wet. It's dry to the touch now. So, okay, so I'm going to do this arm here, or the rest of this arm, so you can see how I laid down the paper towel. And of course I didn't do anything underneath the arm because it's not going to be seen anyway. So I'm just worrying about the top part here. And a little bit of texture on the leg, not much. And I did add to the foot again. Tried the same trick for the finger, for the uh, toenails over here. Did my little indent. Okay, so I'm going to take smaller strips here. Just worked it over like that and then just squeezed my nail in there. And if you can't get right in between those fingers, just use the dull end of your knife. Okay, now so for his belly, I'll get a bigger piece in there and I can make some wrinkles. So I just folded this over a few times. I'm just going to add it into his, or on top of his belly here. Just add a rock wrinkle. I did do a layer of paper towel on his face already and it's completely dry. He's been sitting under the fans for a couple hours now and that's completely dry so you see all the tape shining through but there is a layer of paper towel on there so I can paint it and what I'm going to do I'm going to paint inside his mouth and then I'm going to work on the details on the outside because I want to add teeth in there. I won't be able to paint in there when I add the teeth so I'll just paint it now and I'm just going to do black. I have a picture off to the side here that I'm referring to and his eyes are very close together and like I said earlier because his details are quite small, he's a, he's a small little guy here in front of me, I can do most of the details with my paper towel. So I'm just making indents right now for his eyes. I'm going to get something bigger. I'm going to use a blunt end here. I don't want to poke a hole. I just want to push this in. Okay, so when I get my paper towel ready, I'm going to be putting on some brows here and eyelids. Okay, and I'll squish it up like this. And looking at his forehead, it's quite wrinkly and it kind of comes to a point. Oh, and his ears as well. I have to get those in there. Maybe I'll do those right now. And they're right close to his eyebrows, so... Kind of like that. He's a very textured guy.
I'm just adding some bumps to his lips now, because looking at his photo, he does have bumpy lips as well. So he sat in front of the fan for about 20 minutes, I'd say, and it's dry to the touch. It's still very wet underneath there. But I can play around with it now and not worry about that sliding down. I'm going to add some teeth in there now because I won't be able to do it after. And I'm thinking I'll just use paper towel and kind of roll it up maybe and get it in there. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. So I think that's going to work. I'm going to put a little bit of glue around there. Just make sure they never fall out, no matter how many cavities he gets. I don't think I gave myself enough room here, guys. It should be sticking out more the bottom of his face. Here. So I'm going to have to add a piece here, because looking at his pictures, yeah, his chin is, is beautiful with all those little rocks in it, and I can't do it with that the way it is. So we'll just add some more. And that part that I'm adding to is dry. So I'm not putting this over wet paper towel, otherwise it wouldn't stick at all, right? So adding that piece, I just have to make sure that I get my paper towel, this new one here, overlapped onto the older paper towel. So once it's dry, they're one solid piece. Okay, so I'm going to be adding little squares like that right across and all around. We're in the next morning and he looks great. I think what I'll do is I'll add another layer here because I want that lip to come out just a little bit. And then I got to thinking about this section here. I'd really like that to stand out a little bit better. So what I'm thinking of doing is making some small boulders out of foil. Then I also rounded out the edges, kind of sloped them down. All right, his boulders are on. And just underneath his lip, if you look at pictures of him, he does have a layer of smaller rocks just underneath that lip. So I'm just bunching up leftover paper towel and just shoving it in there. I think that will do the trick, guys. Now we'll let him sit underneath the fan for at least an hour. Oh, I'm going to drip some glue in around those boulders as well because it worked for the teeth. So that is all dry, but this here is actually pretty squishy still, even though it's dry to the touch, and that's because I didn't use any foil in that. I just rolled up paper towel, and I did two layers of paper towel here. So, <laughs> yeah, that's going to continue to dry probably over the next week. It's dry to the touch so I can paint it. Okay, now I'm going to do a black wash and I think the black wash is important because I am going to be doing like a stone texture so I need that black behind the gray that I'm going to be putting on. So I have my basic craft black paint and then I mix it 50-50 water. So it's pretty runny and I do that so I can get the paint just to kind of flow into all the cracks and crevices. You can see lots of areas here that I need to get into. And I got my table protected with some wax paper because it does tend to splash. And I'll use my smaller brush first and I'll just get into all these little cracks here and then I'll use my bigger brush. All right, that coat of black is now dry and I can go ahead and paint them. Now I was debating if I should just go to town and get some gray paint. All I have on hand is this granite gray. It's not the right color and I need two different colors of gray because I want to do a dark gray and a light gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix this with some black and we'll just use what we have. And you'll notice as I'm painting I'm not getting into all the little nooks and crannies. I don't want a solid gray. I want that black to show through in the background. So 
So a little bit of gray will go a long way. So I let them sit in front of the fan for about 20 minutes or so just to let that gray set. And yeah, I'm going to try some highlighting and low lighting right now. So I'm going to go with white first and I'm going to use very little. I'll set the tips of the brush in there and then I'm going to get off the excess and just run this very lightly over top. Okay, so I'm going to get some gray back in here and this time I'm going to make it quite a bit darker. So I'm taking the gray, you see that white there, and I'm just dabbing over it. So I'm not painting, I'm just dabbing over the white. It leaves a little bit of white behind, but changes the color quite a bit. All right, so I'm going to stop that color for now. And I'm just going to get some shadowing in there with the black. So I'm going to take a thinner brush, and I'm going to go around and just do some shadowing. So I go in between the fingers real light, and then carry the crease line up a little ways past where it separates. It just makes the fingers look a little longer. Okay, so last night I went and got a couple more colors from Walmart, and this is navy blue and pewter gray, and I've mixed those colors along with a black together to get this really dark blue. And I'll show you how I mix that in a bit. So looking at photos of them online, I could see that the bottom part of them is darker, like a darker blue. Just transfer a little bit of that color here and there. So to get that color that I was using just now, I just did a couple drops of the navy blue and some pewter gray and some black. And of course all these colors are optional. You can play around with that, but that's how I got that color. All right, guys, I'm just doing an edit just to make sure that it's clear that you can see there's quite a bit of a color change here from where I started. And that's because I kept alternating between uh, dabbing on the blue. I would do some more highlighting, some more black, and a little bit of gray here and there. And when I come to areas like this, I'm using different colors, like a burnt umber. And I'm not painting them on, I'm dabbing them on. And I just dab it wherever I think there should be a little bit of dirt. And again, if you look at photos, you'll get a better idea of where that dirt is. All right, and then I take a little bit, just a little bit of green. And again, I'm just going to dab. And I usually just go right over the brown or around the brown. And then you can just bring that green wherever you think there should be a little bit of moss. I would imagine more moss in the creases and darker areas where there's not much sun gets to. See, and the color transfer is just ever so slight. There's not too much there. Just a little bit of a, a hint of a color there. And if you put on too much green, then just go over it with a little bit of brown. Nothing's going to happen. It's just going to add a little bit more character to your finished piece, that's all. And if you add too much brown, then just go over it with the gray and start over again. In the next clip, I'm going to try out some cornstarch with the acrylic paints, and I have never d tried that before. And I didn't spend too much time trying to figure it out. I just threw it together and dabbed it on there but in the future I will do it again and make a better job of it but yeah it's a totally optional thing but I did leave it in the video just to give you an idea and you can google how to thicken up paints and uh, play around with those techniques as well and yeah I just didn't want to spend too much time on it so I just thought I would try thickening up the paint with some cornstarch I saw a video about making your own uh, chalk paint 
and they used straight cornstarch into the paint and they mixed it up and it's 50 50 so i just did that i just i didn't measure anything guys i just did like a 50 50 and i'm gonna see if this will work it feels really thick wow <laughs> yes it's very thick <laughs> Again, looking at his photos, he's got some pretty thick, um, gravelly type brown on his feet from walking in the dirt. And so I'm just trying to recreate that. Okay, so I think I have to get a little bit braver with the brown, like I did on the foot there. And just dab it on really thick. And then I just dab the green right over top. It looks more like moss. Dirt and moss. I sat it under the fan and let that dry. And I can feel the texture of the cornstarch. So that's pretty cool. That's the first time I've ever tried that, like I said. And I have to get braver with uh, using it, but yeah, I'm going to use it in the future. It's an idea to play around with for sure. And I'm using a cream, and I'm going to dirty this color up after. So I just slightly brushed on a burnt umber and now I'm going to do a bit of black. Before we carry on to the next clip, I did dab in a little bit of white and then on top of that a little bit of green. Just a tiny, tiny bit. And then the eyes, I had a little bit of water on my palette and some blue close by. And I just kind of just barely mixed the water in with a tiny bit of blue and just washed over. Just to give those those whites of the eyes, not make them white, but just lighten them up. Okay, and then over top of that, I did a Varathene with a small brush. And if you don't have any Varathene and you want to have that shiny look in there, clear nail polish, that would work as well. Alright guys, so I would have talked about this in my introduction and also when I started building him, but this is where I'm going to fix his shoulders. Because I fixed his face here, it's thrown off the proportions of his shoulders and his arms. And his body should be a little bit bigger, of course, but what I can fix is his shoulders. So I'm going to do that. If you follow me on Facebook at all, this will be something that you're quite used to with me changing my mind <laughs> and fixing things after. Um, yeah, I'm not one of those blessed people where I can make out a sketch and just make something. Usually I'll make something and then I'll realize, oh, I should have done that or I should have done this. Or I could change this or this would be better. And it's nice with materials that, like this where you can add on at any time. You're never stuck, really. That's why I love building with foil. So the masking tape doesn't hold the new piece in place. It just covers up the foil. So you don't have to worry about overlapping it or anything. You just want to make sure that you cover all the foil. And that way you'll have a surface that uh, is ready for the paper towel. So that's all the masking tape is for. And the paper towel is the part that's going to hold the new piece in place forever. So you want to make sure that you overlap it, the seams, and that you blend them in real good. You see these seams here? I just run my finger along and make sure that I get it pushed all the way in to the old parts. And then that way when it dries, you'll never be able to see that you added it and it also will make sure that that solidifies to the old piece. And while I'm here, I'm going to be adding a few rock-like textures to the arm and I'll just do that with paper towel. I'm just roughing it up and I'll stick that there. What are you doing in here? You're not allowed in here. You had quite the jump there too. Well, it looks like I could fit one, two, three, four, five, six more cats. Do you need some friends in there? <laughs> All right, I'll leave you in there for now, but you're not allowed in here. You know the rules. Okay, so I can paint this now. It's dry to the touch and these will still be drying over the next week or so, but they are dry to the touch, so I can go ahead and paint that. And you can see I did add a few more in the back here as well. So 
So I'll just go ahead and paint them and I'll, I'll start off with the black again. This time I don't have to water it down because I'm not covering that much of a surface and I don't have to worry about it getting into cracks and crevices. So I'll just go ahead and paint them and I'm just going to overlap just a little ways there and when I do my other colors that will blend right in. So I'm just going to follow all the same steps that I showed you earlier with the gray and then I'll do some white highlighting and some of those other colors. Oh, he looks so much better now with those shoulders sticking up like that. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'm glad I decided to do that. When you add a piece like that, especially when you're using multiple colors, you can easily blend everything in and no one will ever know that you added. And yeah, it's a fun technique. So on top of his um, new shoulders, I put the black paint, then the gray paint, and then I highlighted with the white. Remember how I showed you in the beginning, I did all the white. And then I just alternated between all the colors that I've been using. So that dark blue that I made up, and brown, that burnt umber, and a little bit of hunter green. And I just keep alternating. There's no particular order to, to do it in after you've gotten the gray paint on there. And some of the colors, remember, I'm dabbing them on too. So if that was burnt umber, I would just dab that on like that. And then I go over it with maybe a green or some of that blue. It doesn't matter. And after everything's done, then I still go back and highlight again. You can do it over and over as many times as you want. The more you do, the more texture is going to add. And then after all of that, I take the black paint and I do all the shadow work. And that makes a huge difference in how things end up looking. It's everywhere where I think something should be sticking out a little bit more. I'll create a shadow behind it. And those fingernails, all I did to highlight those is just put black in. Remember where I stuck those indents with my own thumbnail? So inside those indents, I just add a black line. And once the paint dries, it kind of fades a little bit too. So going back over it a few times doesn't hurt. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to show you before I finish up this painting part. Um, these little veins here. I just take a small brush and it's really hard to get the skinny skinny veins so I just brush on what I what I could and then take another brush and I'll go right beside it with the blue and kind of push that line a bit thinner. It's kind of hard to get a, a nice thin line on these bumpy surfaces. No matter how thin the brush is it just tends to um, make that line messy looking. And one final word about the painting. I, I don't think I emphasized enough about letting the colors set. Uh, I, many times during this project I would leave him sit underneath the fan for about 30 minutes. Um, and that was while I was painting him. Then I would come back and then pick up the brushes again. It makes a huge difference in the colors that you see because the colors change as they dry. And I think it's important um, to do that every now and then. And I don't spend too much time on one color, if you notice at all during the video. I do jump around quite a bit and I alternate between colors. So I always have many brushes going and a bunch of different colors going all at the same time. And I change because I don't want to overwork a color. I get a little bit uh, fixated on a color, so I try not to do that. And yeah, I'll just dab on a little bit of blue. You'll see me put the brush down, then I'll pick up the black and I'll go and do this outlining here. And I think... In the end, it just adds so much more character when you don't spend too much time on one color. Use them all at the same time, let the colors set, and yeah, have fun with it. Don't be afraid of colors. And you'll notice that when I started him, the only solid color that I used was the black wash. Everything else was put on very lightly or dabbed on, and uh, I used very little color, but there's a lot of color in him, if that makes sense. And if you ever overuse a color, uh, you don't have to worry about that. Let it dry, come back, and just use your highlighter colors like your white or your gray and just go over it really really lightly and, and bring the color out of there. Painting has become really really fun for me. I used to be my least favorite part of the project. In fact I used to like projects before I painted them and then hate them after I painted them. <laughs> That's how much I hated painting and I haven't perfected it yet. I'm still working on it but yeah it's a lot of fun to paint now. I enjoy it. If you get anything out of this video that would be one thing I would love to pass along is painting can be a lot of fun. If you're not afraid of it, let those colors set. Use a variety of different brushes, a variety of different paints, and just have fun. If I remember correctly, I think when I started him off, he was about five inches tall. And now he is about 
Well, he's a little bit better than seven inches, including that tip on the top of his head. He's about six and a half inches across and seven inches from foot to his back end. So the last thing he needs is a rock. And I did make him one. So this is made out of the foil, same way I made him. And I thought it looked pretty cool in there, but I found this in my stash. This is actually a gift from my son. He was walking home one day and said, I would just love this rock. And he was right. <laughs> I love rock gifts. So I think the color difference on this one really sets him off. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And even though I struggled a little bit with his proportions along the way, I hope that fixing them in the video also helped you out along the way too. So you know you're never stuck and you've never gone too far to go back and fix something. So until next time, guys, have a good one, and we'll see you super soon.